from Discovery Channel's hit series, Deadliest Catch, Captain Jonathan Hillstrand. Gentlemen, start your answers. Marcos Ambrose outside of Keslowski and the green flag were underway. Kyle Busch was closing in on Marcos Ambrose when we went to the break. Here was the pass that eventually found him clearing the nine. Well, he had worked for a few laps trying to make that low line work. Couldn't ever get him cleared, but uh, gets a nice run up out of four. And now Kozlowski has put a little bit of a gap in front of him for some cushion, intentional or not. He's got it, and he's got Matt Kenzer, who's climbed up to sixth position behind him. Here's Truex. There's Kane, and then Jimmy Johnson back in ninth position. Who's messing with whose mind now as we come back live to a race for seventh position between Jimmy Johnson and Brad Kozlowski. This is Kozlowski trying to pass Johnson. It's been Jimmy, as he should, trying to plant the seeds of doubt in his younger rival for the title's mind all week long. I just don't know. I, I, I couldn't keep my mouth shut if I was father. I would say, let him go. <laughs> I mean, there's no real reason to be racing him at this point. I know that's not what, what Brad wants to hear. He'll make the decision, and he's made good decisions on the track, but he finally does look like he's going to let him go. Championship leader gives up seventh position. He said, I need a touch more drive off, and my car is clumsy into turn number one. It'll be down on the track bar, a little air pressure out of the left rear, and a four-tire change for Brad. Good smooth pit stop so far, and get a full fuel, and he's out. Yeah, the two cars struggled on the right rear. I don't know what they were doing over there, if they were making a chassis adjustment or what it was, but they had some problems on the right side. Martin Truex Jr. got the lead from Kyle Busch. Now in traffic, Truex is struggling a little bit, and Kyle looks like he's going to get it back. Or not. How Kyle was able to gain there. Truex just can't seem to take his car down to the bottom and make any speed off the corner at all. Kyle's trying to do it. That's really difficult right now. These tires are worn. Whoa, that's going to be close. Wow. Close call there. Championship note, Jimmy Johnson led that last lap. Bonus point for Jimmy Johnson. He's into the pits now, Doc. And that's why he stayed on the track one extra lap, Alan. They wanted to be able to lead that lap and get the point. Jimmy says the car is free in, free exit tight middle. Jack and Al said, what should I fix first? He says, you got to fix the free on exit so I can use the throttle. Chance the adjustment right rear, four tires. It's actually the exit of the pit lane that traded the lead. Little pit exit drag racing <laughs> to get Kyle Busch back in front. Jimmy said the exit is much better with the adjustment. Still very, very tight in the middle, so the car sits really hard on the right rear. He told Chad the first adjustment you made really helped the car. So they make another adjustment. He's down and away here after four tires, two tires. Dave. Kedlowski gives up 11. The takeoff was worse, but that was expected. That was his strength last time. Brad feels like it would have held on a little bit better. They'll take four tires. They'll get a track bar adjustment. Well, a little strategy session has, in fact, played out here. So what do you think about that two-tire call there, Dave? We'll see. I <laughs> reserve judgment. I don't know about that. I'm not too much in favor. I thought they were just getting their car where they could compete up front. Let's see how this segment of the race plays into things. in a hurry to get back to the front. And there's three wide. Rick 
Mickey Stenhouse Jr. And the caution flags out. Hit if you can, hit if you can. And he winds up running jump, 15 uh, for a lot of the race. Two tires and fuel, two tires right side tires and fuel. Johnson gives up the lead, Doc. And you heard the radio, two right side tires and fuel, a last minute call. In fact, Jimmy wasn't coming on pit road, and Chad said, okay, pit if you can, pit. Jimmy turned hard left, right side tires, no adjustments, and he goes all the way to the wall, headed down pit road. And here we go. Ryan Newman all the way to the bottom. Yeah, along with Jimmy Johnson going by that two car, who's got himself in the middle of a bad spot right now, going back. Johnson by two of them in a corner. And there's the championship leader starting today, and as they run, Brad Keselowski, who's in 11th, Dave. Ellen, they told him in that last uh, break that he, he was five laps short without saving. He needed to save five laps of fuel if they could get to one more stop. Now, remember, at Charlotte, they ran him dry on one of those economy runs. The following week, I talked to Paul about that. Did you change anything mechanically, procedurally? And he said, no. In fact, I was more worried when we were doing it at Dover. I was surprised at Charlotte. It may have been an ambient temperature thing. It got very cool that night. More horsepower eats more fuel. So they really haven't changed much, but they got to be careful. They don't run him dry. Yeah, out of gas. Oh, oh, there you go. Say again. Out of gas. Come with you. Be ready. Still under power. He's going to need Second that. pump on here. Second pump should be on. Well, we're going to be fine here, guys. Just nail the stop. We'll be fine. Make sure you get a pull. Trying to get back to pit road and not be able to get it started. Can't, come speed. Come. Can't speed right here. Turn in, turn in. Nice push. Keep an eye on Brandon Harder, left rear. He's a gas man. Got to get it full. Brandon got a packet. Got a packet. Got a packet. Uh -oh. That might be the last time that Jimmy Johnson's on pit road. Might have the missed the road. Yeah, I think he might be coming back, Doc. Could be a critical mistake. Saw that official. Oh, we got to come back in. Oh, wow. boy. Oh, my gosh. We talked about the pressure on the pit crews. A mistake there. Yeah, he can. Come on back down pit road. Is that right, Jen? Yep, 10 -4. Very, very costly mistake. They were waiting on fuel anyway, so there wasn't a lot of pressure on the power changers to try to be quick. I'll tell you, though, this is a big race, and the nerves are high. Really hard to stay calm. The pit crews just felt like that was their last chance to get out there and be part of this. And it's one thing to make a mistake early in the race. You have time to recover from it. The box, Another to make it now. NASCAR rules say you must have five lug nuts installed on each wheel when the car leaves the pit lane. And in the race for speed, one was missing.
And Jimmy Johnson is on the apron, on the access road to the inside. Look at the smoke inside the car. And no, that's not coming out of Jimmy's ears. I thought I saw something coming out of the back of the right rear of the car, but I thought maybe it was sand coming up off the track because it was running really high, but it must be something else. Doc? They're thinking it's a drive train problem. They're looking, going to look under the car. There's not a vibration, something rubbing, and they said maybe it's a drive train coming through the firewall. The smoke got worse. Now Jimmy is shut the engine off, fired it back up. And apparently they are done. And the championship for 2012 will not go to Jimmy Johnson. Not a sight we expected to see today. The 48 car being pushed behind the wall. Wow, that things have changed in such a hurry, and that's what this sport's about, just how quickly we talk about it can change, but it really looks like there for a few minutes that we were going to have a battle right to the end, having no idea what may happen with the 48, a chance to win, and, and uh, the two cars going to have to pit again, but uh, certainly all of this has changed. Disappointing for Mr. Hendricks. Big picture here. Real big picture here. The 48's gone back to the garage. Something broke. Now that's a real big picture for Brad. That's uh, pretty well clinches it for this two punch. Essentially, they just need to run it out, stay out of trouble, and the dream will come true. Coming up on 20 laps to go in the final race of the season. There's the race for the lead. Problem for both Kyle Busch, 18, and Martin Truex, Jr., 56, is that they need to pit again for fuel to make it to the checkered flag, while the third-place car, running some 15 seconds behind them, Jeff Gordon, is in position to try and make it to the finish with the fuel he has on board. 15 seconds is a long time on a mile and a half race track. We wait on Jeff. Certainly bring up a lot of conversation if he should go on and win this race. Uh, all those people that thought that he shouldn't even be here, he should be suspended for his actions last week. And taking no chances, and with the freedom to do so, as Jimmy Johnson is behind the wall. Here's Keslowski coming in, Dave. You could call it a parade lap of sorts on pit road. The crew will very meticulously and methodically go about changing the four tires and giving him fuel. When he was reminded that Jimmy was in the garage and he asked, are you sure? They said, yes, the 48 is in the garage. He said, then let's race. He'll get four fresh tires. He can go about as hard as he wants to as long as he's careful. Jeff has a two second lead on Flint Boyer. They are on the similar fuel schedule. So now the question is, do they have enough to make it to the checkered flag and ironically finish one and two? And you see top of the screen at the moment as they run, Boyer has overhauled Jimmy Johnson for second in the championship. That's worth a pretty good chunk of cash at the uh, champion celebration in Las Vegas in a couple of weeks. They are one lap away as the captain has showed up in his team's pit down from the top of the tower for the final lap. Jeff Gordon leading the race. Brad Keselowski in charge of the championship. After what has been, it's fair to say, one of the more tumultuous weeks of his storied NASCAR Sprint Cup career. Check the flag go, and a win at Homestead for Jeff Gordon. Hey, I'm proud of you guys. And the checkered flag at an NASCAR Sprint Cup Championship for Penske Racing and Michigan's Brad Kozlowski. We did a great job. What an awesome season. Let me introduce you to your 2012 Cup Sprint Cup Champion right here, guys. Good job. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, your 2012 NASCAR Sprint Cup champion, Brad Keselowski. <laughs> Begins to shower the crew back. Hey, Brad, your mom, Kay, just said the Keselowski family has waited a lifetime for this moment. What does it mean to you? Well, I saw this really cool video that Ray Lewis did, and, uh, you know, he said in it, that uh, 
you know, always, throughout my whole life, I've been told I'm not big enough, not fast enough, not strong enough, and I don't have what it takes. And I've used that as a chip on my shoulders to carry me through my whole career, Jerry, my whole career. And, you know, it took till this year for me to realize that that was right, man. They were right. I'm, I'm not big enough, not fast and strong enough. No team, or no person is. Only a team can do that. And these guys up here, they make me big enough. They make me fast enough. They make me strong enough to do anything we want to do. And it, it's because of these guys. I, I can't be here without them. I really can't. Um, you know, th this isn't a one-man effort. I might get the glory, but it's about these guys. It's about my family. You know, I, I use this saying all the time that, you know, life is a team sport. And... Uh, a sport is a part of being, uh, you know, a, a part of this world, part of being in this, uh, in this life. And my family's part of my team, just like these guys are my coworkers. And uh, without them, I'm nothing. So I'm just, just very proud, very happy for every one of them, uh, every one of the people that's a part of my team. I feel like I have the best team in the world around me.